All right, so I know this is going to be a very different video from what I usually make, but um, I don't give a fuck. This is going to be very fun. And in today's video, we'll be asking the question and answering the question if marine reptiles could survive in modern day. Now, in the modern day, there's only two groups of marine reptiles, um, sea snakes and sea turtles, and to some extent, marine iguanas and saltwater crocodiles. But we're going to be asking the question, we're going to be bringing the marine reptiles from the Mesozoic, like Mosasaurus, Ichthyosaurus, Pliosaurus, all those bad boys, into the modern day, and we're going to see if they could survive. And we'll be basing our survival chances on three categories. How well they would fit in the environment, the food availability in the environment, and the competition. And yes, I know this is sort of like Manly Mesozoic and Vibia Vividen do the same thing, but... It's a very efficient and fun way of doing this sort of stuff, and it leads to some fun speculation, so shut the fuck up. So in this video, we'll be placing 100 individuals of five species into the modern-day oceans and seeing how well they will survive. And those species being the Oplorodon, the motherfucker whose science got greatly exaggerated. 26 years ago, walking with dinosaurs. It's a Leo Pleurodon, Charlie. A magical Leo Pleurodon. It's gonna guide our way to Candy Mountain. Ichthyosaurus, an animal that's one of the greatest examples of convergent evolution. It's a fucking reptile with the body plan of a shark, but with the head structure of a dolphin. Like, how fucking cool is that? Pliosaurus, basically just Leo Pleurodon's big brother and my favorite marine reptile. In general, I like Pliosaurus more than the Mosasaurus. Mosasaurs are really cool. I think they're my second favorite, but I think they're a little overrated. Like this, they get um way too, like they overshadow them the other marine reptiles like plesiosaurs and plasaurs a bit too much, especially in pop culture. Speaking of mosasaurs, our next animal on the list is mosasaurus, an animal whose size always gets greatly exaggerated. And last but not least, we have the polyco, polyco, polycotylid. The polycotylid from the Kem Kem formation. I know that's a very odd choice. I mean, like, why not go for, like, a bigger ichthyosaur or a plesiosaur? But it's going to lead to some fun speculation. You'll, you'll see later in the video. All right, sorry if I sound a bit different from, like, the previous segment. Um, I haven't recorded anything for this video for about, like, two days now. And I just woke up from a nap I took because... You know, every morning, um, I'm forced out of my beautiful bed, and I'm forced to go into this um, concentration camp called school, and it gets me really tired, so I either come home and take a nap, but anyways. So, if we're going to find out how well these marine reptiles would fit in the modern ocean environment, we'll have to see how the oceans were like during their time. So, our Jurassic friends, like Aethiosaurus, Pliosaurus, and Leoplorodon, we're living in a much warmer ocean than today, with the average ocean temperature of the Jurassic being 28 to 30 degrees Celsius, or 82 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit, with some models that approach 32 degrees Celsius, or 89 degrees Fahrenheit. That's like a, whew, that's like a fucking hot tub. Compare that to modern day, where ocean temperatures are around 24 to 27 degrees Celsius, or 75 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Now on to our Lake Cretaceous friends. Mosasaurus' oceans were slightly cooler than the Jurassic at around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius or 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the polycotylid of the Kem Kem Formation lived in the hot, humid swamps and wetlands of what is now the Sahara Desert, alongside dinosaurs like Spinosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. So, with all the differences in temperature and in environment to today's oceans, just how well would the reptiles fit in their new habitat? To tell you the truth, they might do just fine. Let me explain. We have evidence of ichthyosaurus having an insulating layer of blubber, as well as evidence of blubber being on a polycotylid plesiosaur. We also have a lot of evidence and research indicating that mosasaurus, plesiosaurus, and ichthyosaurus were warm-blooded with endothermic metabolisms. An isotopic study in 2016 found out that mosasaurus are able to maintain a higher internal body temperature similar to that of birds, as opposed to other reptiles like lizards, snakes, and crocodilians. So all this means that most, if not all, marine reptiles had some adaptation that allowed them to maintain their internal body temperature. This will allow them to fit relatively comfortably 
into the modern day ocean. They might have to get used to the lack of shallow oceans and seas as the modern world lacks the shallow seas and oceans the Mesozoic fielded. However, it wouldn't be the end of the world as I can just see them entering the coastal environments. The interesting part about the polycotylid is that it resided in the Kemkem -Kem formation of the Late Cretaceous period. However, the Kemkem -Kem formation today is vastly different than how it was in Cretaceous. So just where did the polycotylid want to live? Given the fact that the Kemkem -Kem formation during the polycotylid's time was a lush, brackish river ecosystem with a shit ton of fish, I think that the best places for the polycotylid to reside at now would be places like the Amazon, or the Everglades, or the Congo, or maybe even southern Louisiana. Though I doubt they picked the Amazon, as I'll go over why later, but all these environments are all lush, brackish river ecosystems with a shit ton of fish. And I'm sorry about my fucking shitty voice. I just fucking, I just cannot stop fucking stuttering. I'm so sorry, guys. You gotta listen to me fucking talk. <sighs> I'm sorry, guys. I'll give the marine reptiles a 7 out of 10 in the habitat score as they had the necessary adaptations needed to deal with the change in temperatures. However, they would still have to get used to the lack of shallow seas and oceans the Mesozoic fielded. And as long as the polycotylid stays in ecosystems like the Everglades or Southern Louisiana, it'll be fine. If not, it'll... I don't fucking know. <laughs> okay, this category will be the easiest category for the marine reptiles, and let me go over why. So our smaller marine reptiles like the ichthyosaurus and the polycotylid, they will do just fine. Ichthyosaurus will be perfectly fine with the food availability in the oceans as today's oceans are still filled with gigantic amounts of fish and squid, which were their main food sources in the Jurassic. The polycotylid would have a huge menu of fish to munch on in the Everglades, such as snooks, gar, bass, tarpons, and more, while in the Congo they would munch on lungfish, whatever the fuck that is, and many eel species. Our mid to large marine reptiles like Leoplorodon, Mosasaurus, and Pliosaurus would stuff their faces in an all-you-can-eat buffet of sharks, large fish, seal, sirenians, and small cetaceans. Pliosaurus funke had very large flippers, especially compared to other Pliosaurus. This would have allowed it to be very quick for its size, while the Mosasaurus shark-like tail allowed it to travel up to speeds up to 30 miles per hour. They would chomp off large shark species like tigers and great whites, as well as small to medium sized cetaceans like dolphins, mink whales, and possibly beak whales. That is, if they could fucking find the beak whales, as those motherfuckers, they're always fucking down in the ocean looking for squid. You know, they don't, they rarely ever go up to the surface to breathe. Fucking weirdos who just always stay down at the bottom of the ocean. If the marine reptiles traveled near Hawaii, they might come across the Krusty Krab which would give them access to the Krabby Patties, the Kelp Rings, the Krusty Krab Pizza. Krusty Krab, yeah, 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 pizza is the pizza, yeah, for you and me. These are all food options they lacked in the Mesozoic. Okay, all jokes aside, they would do just fine in the food category tier. And with that, I'll give them a 9 out of 10. But from the easiest category, we go into the fucking, the hardest category. Okay, so this is the part I'm sure we've all been waiting for. How would the marine reptiles fare against the modern ocean predators? And to tell you the truth, it's going to be a bit rough for our marine reptiles, and let's go over why, starting with the smaller two reptiles. Ichthyosaurus would be heaven at the worst, as they would be directly competing with dolphins for the same food sources. Dolphins and ichthyosaurus are very similar, however dolphins have some major advantages over the reptilian counterpart. Dolphins are far more intelligent, being some of the smartest creatures on the planet. Dolphins also use an advanced sonar system to detect prey, and they also have advanced group behavior. All of these allow for very efficient hunting methods which ichthyosaurus lacked. The ichthyosaurus would have to be very careful with which areas they chose to hunt in the ocean. And if they ever got into a, an aggressive encounter with a dolphin pod, they would have to flee. Ichthyosaurus would also be far more at risk from predation of sharks and dolphins, as they lack the complex group behavior that keeps dolphins safe from predation. In Louisiana, the polycotylid wouldn't really face much competition, as there isn't really any other animal that fills the same niche as a large, fast-moving fish eater. 
They would face some predation from gators, but that's really the only animal they would have to worry about in Louisiana. In the Everglades, however, gators would be far from the only thing the polycotylid would have to worry about, as they would have to deal with massive American crocodiles and lots of shark species, as well as maybe the invasive Burmese python. They also might see me. Mm -hmm. What's up, Lewis? And the Yoink Man. Hey guys, I'm in the Florida Everglades and I got a handful of invasive Burmese pythons. The polycotylid would have to use its greater endurance to avoid encounters Please with don't these ferocious my predators. I just want to touch that cute in the Congo, they would face up against crocodile species, as well as hippos and a terrifying looking tigerfish. I don't think either the Everglades or the Congo would be as bad for the polycotylid as most people would think. Sharing its environment with large predators wasn't anything new to the polycotylid as in the Kemkem formation, it shared its ecosystem with the massive crocodiliform Elosuchus and the famous Spinosaurus, one of the largest predators ever exist, well, terrestrial-wise. The polycotylid also most likely had greater endurance than its cold-blooded, ripchilling counterparts. As earlier stated in the video, marine reptiles had warm-blooded endothermic metabolisms. This would allow them to avoid mass predation attacks from the predators in its new ecosystem. Of course, predation is still inevitable, however, it wouldn't make the environments completely unlivable for a polycotylid. Also, the reason why I doubt that the polycotylid would ever reside in the Amazon earlier in the video was because of river dolphins. These pink motherfuckers would be a pain in the ass for the polycotylid, and add to the fact that the Amazon is home to large predators such as jaguars, black caimans, anacondas, and river otters, and yeah, this environment is way too harsh for the polycotylid. Our mid-sized friend the Leoplorodon would also be facing some trouble. They would face some harassment from dolphin pods, and they would face some competition from many shark species. However, in a 1v1 against most predatory shark species, I'm betting my money on the Leoplorodon. But what about the great white shark? The Leoplorodon was larger at around 6 to 10 meters, and had a much stronger bite force. However, the great white shark was faster. The old Plorodon against the Great White Shark, I'm betting my money 70% of the time, the old Plorodon would win. The Leo Plorodon might be also able to hold its own against a single orca. However, against an entire orca pod, it's being turned into a happy meal, and so is the other two larger reptiles, Mosasaurus and Pliosaurus. Orcas will be a constant threat to the marine reptiles as they literally like they have been documented taking down blue whales, animals far larger than even the largest pliosaurs. If the pliosaurs or any other marine reptiles got into an encounter with an orca pod, they would have to flee. The large marine reptiles would also be lucky that sperm whales are too busy gobbling up a giant squid in the ocean depths, so they won't really compete much. However, if the marine reptiles got into an aggressive encounter with a sperm whale pod, they would also have to flee. And let's talk about how humans would have an effect on the marine reptiles. I don't think the smaller two reptiles like the polycotylid and the ichthyosaurus would be too dangerous to humans as they're too busy gobbling up fish and wouldn't really be too much aggressive. I think they'd be more like a seal or a dolphin, like, you know, they're not actually gonna hunt humans. But however, they would attack humans if provoked. Same with any other animal. However, the Leo Plorodon would be in the perfect size range and behavior to gobble up humans. I don't really think the Mosasaurus or the Pliosaurus would see us as a food option as we are too fucking small for these massive creatures. However, if they did want to go after us, then well, like, what can I say? You're fucking cooked. If humans also gained a taste for marine reptiles, they would be in big trouble as we humans are just fat, disgusting pieces of shit who could not go one day about eating some big ass meal like this motherfucker right here. Look at the guy, he's eating, a, like, he eats everything from the ocean. Sea cucumbers, giant crabs, moray eels, sharks, stingrays, a fucking bass with tapeworms in it. Yo, low-key, like, the tapeworms add some flavor, they're pretty good. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Yeah, that's right, scream like a little bitch. I cannot wait until you end up like Quint from Jaws. <laughs> But anyways, so yes, humans would also be a big issue to the marine reptiles as we would hunt them as well as fucking pollute their environment. Every ocean animal, well most ocean animals, are suffering from human pollution and human activity. And with all of this, I'll give the marine reptiles a 5 out of 10 in the competition score, as well as a 6 out of 10 in the overall survivor score. Sorry about my shitty voice. They had the necessary adaptations to deal with the changes in environment, 
and also a lot of food availability. However, they would face extreme pressure from humans and the new ocean apex predators. And with that concludes this fucking mess of a video. And I'm really sorry this video seemed a bit rushed or a bit boring. This is my first time ever making a video like this. And I'll be sure to get better later in the future, inshallah. However, you gotta realize that I had to do a lot of stuff in real life other than just work on this video. I had to do school, school's ending, so I had to work on my exams, and as well as a lot of, a lot of other stuff. You know, I, have, I have a fucking life. All right, I have a life. I do other shit other than work on videos all day. All right, I go out, I do shit. She got two lumps on her nose. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below which kind of speculative video we'd like to see next. And also, join the Discord server. I've been having a lot of fun on Discord lately. And yeah. But anyways, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.